Hello. Today we're going to talk about variational circuits and quantum simulation. This is one of my favorite topics because I've been heavily involved in it for the last uh, decade and a half, I guess. So let's just begin uh, where it all begins, and it begins, it begins with the famous Richard Feynman, who in 1982, in a seminal paper in the International Journal of Theoretical Physics, proposed that quantum devices, that in this case I will call quantum simulators, could simulate natural physical phenomena efficiently. Okay, so this lecture is about that and then how we enter into the topic of variational circuits. So why was that seminal paper so important to the point that it cited more times than this, the work of Feynman for QED that gave him his Nobel Prize? The reason is because this is the foundation of our field, right? That was one of the first papers where the idea that computing or using a quantum system for, for simulating another quantum system was going to give us some definite advantage. And Feynman was a very intuitive researcher, a very intuitive scientist, and very charismatic. So what, was, what did he have in mind can be explained very simply in the equations that I have here on this side. This psi is the wave function of a system that I want to simulate. Okay? Think about it as a condensed matter system or a molecule or some other place or quantum mechanics plays a role. And then imagine that I have some mapping and the art of quantum simulation is finding that mapping that takes such a wave function to the wave function of a controllable quantum system that I will be calling quantum simulator. Here are the indexes, S for the system, and QS for the quantum simulator. The time evolution of the quantum system is determined by the unitary time evolution operator, which is this imaginary exponential of the Hamiltonian times time. Right? So you have this natural system that is evolving with this Hamiltonian evolution using this unitary time evolution operator that is mapped to this controllable Hamiltonian that might be different, but it's meant to basically mimic the same dynamics on this quantum system. So Feynman's key insight is that any observable obtained on this side of the equations would be equivalent to any observable obtained on this side of the equations, right? Because after all, these cats for these quantum states would be indistinguishable from each other, and the evolution as well would be, to some tolerance, indistinguishable, right? So in some sense, he had the intuition that if you want to simulate the dynamics of a quantum system, why not exploit the natural quantum dynamical evolution? Okay? Okay, so I actually found my first typo, okay, and I hope the one that found it gets many brownie points. We're talking about then, 14 years later, an inspiration for me, a colleague, a mentor, and a friend, Seth Lloyd, professor of mechanical engineering at MIT, he calls himself a professor of quantum mechanical engineering, made another key seminal contribution. So what Seth did is formalize and completely make the basis for Feynman's idea. In other words, he grounded it, and he proved that quantum simulation for what I like to call natural Hamiltonians is efficient. In other words, a quantum simulator or a full-blown quantum computer can do it. So now we're going to go into the mode of a full-blown quantum computer and thinking of the gate model of quantum computation. Okay? So, first terminology, I'm introducing here this term, k-local. k-local means that an operator is acting at at most k qubits. Okay? So a k-local Hamiltonian is a Hamiltonian that acts at, on at least k number of different qubits that in simulation we usually have some mappings that a qubit or a group of qubits or some mapping to the qubits will represent some site on a system. In condensed matter physics, it could be a site where electrons are hopping around. In chemistry, it could be an orbital, etc. So some unit of the quantum system that you want to simulate. Okay? So, just terminology, right? This is the system Hamiltonian that we already discussed here that can be partitioned in 
different terms. And just remember that Hamiltonians really are just energy functions. Okay, So this is just counting all the different contributions to the energy of the quantum system that in turn determine its dynamics. Okay, And again, all these, all these terms have this rule that they can only act on at least a certain number of qubits given locality. Okay, very important feature for being able to do simulation. Okay, so uh, the the important uh, uh, result uh, from said Lloyd is that these uh, Hamiltonians, okay, uh, can be implemented uh, efficiently, and it is because the number of terms L, okay, scales polynomially on the system signs n, and usually it's a low polynomial. Order four, for example, for the applications that I really like. 